G'day guys, Steve Morgan here, Fishing Monthly Magazine's great morning down here at Cleveland in South East Queensland and a great opportunity for us this morning with a brand new top deck from Seafarer Boats. I'm here with Chris Thompson. Chris, this is a, a model Seafarer that's been around for a long time, but it's had a few changes over the years. Tell us the, the latest Victory 6 metre, what's it got to do with? Yes, Steve, it's certainly had plenty of changes over the years. Uh, the latest is obviously the whole new top deck uh, with the optional hard top. Uh, so literally from the front of the boat right to the back, there's a heap of new additions that we've uh, brought into the Seafarer Victory. Um, just to give it an update and a, and a bit of a refresh and um, and I guess make it a little bit more appealing to the current, uh, current fisho. Now the hull itself it's been around a long time and you haven't changed the hull because when you're on a good thing you don't you don't want to muck with it do you? Change a good thing. So let's go through let's go from from bow to stern the actual changes that have been made. Absolutely so right from the front you've got a, uh, a nice big uh, anchor well uh, that we've increased the size of just to make allowance for uh, everyone wants to run nice big drum winch these days. Yep. Um, moving through your cabin heights lifted about 100 mil um, in order for us to be able to put a hard top on there it's also created a lot more uh, room and space in that cabin uh, so when you do want to get away for a, for a kip under there over, or doing overnighters there's a yep. little bit more headroom in there for those bigger guys to get in. Um, moving through you've then got a brand new dash layout room for 60 inch flush mount sounders, um, nine inch gauges up on the dash, uh, you can still even mount a nice big, um, you know, all the guys love to run those big eight or nine inch Furuno sounders separately yep. up on the up on the top of the dash, there's plenty of room for that. Um, you've then got twin live bait tanks, you've got uh, the side door standard, the optional hard top, uh, the, the list just goes on. Yeah, and I noticed that the transom itself, it's been remodelled from a previous model and I, I suppose it, it's reasonably important because it gives you a lot of fishing room in that cockpit. Tell us what's happened with the transom. Absolutely, so the, uh, the transom we've uh, basically covered down the back of it to allow you can put your batteries right in underneath and keep them uh, away and nice and secure uh, and away from, you know, or your, your, your dirty yep. things that you don't like getting on your on yep. your batteries, uh, especially salt water, uh, and the twin live bait tanks, and then uh, redesign the the anchor well as uh, sorry the engine well as well to um, allow for your, your big four strokes and uh, do away with a couple of the old things that we didn't need on there anymore. Now, uh, speaking of big four strokes, this has got the uh, 200 horsepower Suzuki on it. Um, that's it's it's probably what three or four years old that the big lean burn motor. Tell us about that block and how it's gone for you. Absolutely. So inline four cylinder, uh, 200 horsepower. Um, Lean burn, obviously, you know, leading its class in terms of fuel economy. Um, offset drive shafts, been a nice big prop on it. Um, it tried, tested, proven over the last few years, one of our most popular motors. Yeah, it has, and we see a lot of them on the national boat show circuits. Um, tell us a little bit also about the, it's got an aluminium frame Dunbia I-beam trailer underneath it. Um, what have you seen in the marketplace? Are people um, tending towards these aluminium frame trailers nowadays? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're seeing more and more and more of our boats go out on alloy, alloy trailers now, um, especially with the price. It's, you know, it, it's not that much more to go from a galvanised trailer to an alloy trailer. Uh, and there's so many features and benefits that you get um, moving up to something, you know, especially longevity. Now, I noticed this trailer has the, uh, like the electronic brakes on it, not the, the override brakes. Um, what does it weigh in at and what sort of tow vehicle do you need to tow this thing? Because it's a reasonable sized boat. It is a reasonable sized boat. Uh, as long as you've got towing capacity up to two and a half ton. Okay, so, so most of your twin cab utes and all that sort of stuff will tow it, no worries. Absolutely, even some of your uh, your bigger SUVs now will, will have no problems towing the Victory. Yeah, well there you go, it's a, uh, it's a big boat, it's a simple boat, it's, uh, it's a boat that's been around a long time. We're going to drop it on the water this morning and come back to you with some performance statistics.
Well, there you go. Uh, what started off as a fairly calm morning on Moreton Bay ended up being ideal conditions to test this seafarer in some conditions that you'd go out in. They weren't over the top, but, you know, a solid 10, 15, 20 knots into and against the tide creates conditions that anywhere in Australia will test a hull like this. Um, performance wise, uh, this boat uh, got to 74 kilometres an hour at 6,300 RPM and it was propped to hit that rev limiter and quite a fun boat to drive at that speed. Um, the best economy uh, was between that three and a half and four and a half thousand RPM where this boat delivered between that 1.8 and 1.9 kilometres per litre and combine that with a near 200 litre fuel tank that gives you plenty of range for any of your weekends away. Um, as far as this whole package sits, it's not it's not top of the line when it comes to price. There are boats that are more expensive on it, but it is a boat that'll definitely uh, suit the serious fishermen. It's designed to be quite easily cleaned um, and everything's built practically. There's, there's not thousands of little additions and uh, things that can break, things that can go wrong. It's designed to suit an angler that might fish once or twice a week and doesn't want the two hour cleaning job associated with it at the end of the day. The way, we, uh, the way we tested this boat, of course, we went for a drive around Peel Island. We got to test the boat into the, into the waves, away from the waves, in the calm and in the rough. And there was always a comfortable speed to drive this boat. Uh, a lot of the time it was between that three and four and a half thousand RPM. Um, the boat landed quietly. Uh, it's all fully foam filled the deck, so it's not loud when it lands. And there's always, if you're quartering into it or away from it, there's always a trim position where the, uh, the boat would sit very nicely. And it was quite a comfortable trip in some nasty conditions. Um, the boat does, doesn't mind a bit of trim at all. When you trim it to the right level, you'll feel it lift out of the water and you'll feel it give you that nice ride that this hull is famous for. Uh, the Suzuki, of course, that 200 horsepower, um, they're traditionally a very economical engine and with those you know, high ones in the kilometres per litre stakes, that's right what we expected in the economy. Um, there are six Seafarer dealers nationally, but if you want more information about the Seafarer boats, you can go to Seafarer Boats dot com dot au or you can like their Facebook page Seafarer Boats for new models, specials and when they're going to appear at boat shows. As tested with all of the uh, the big Simrad on the inside with that hard top, uh, this boat comes in at 106,990. Uh, packages you can get from 79,990 and that's without the hard top, with a down spec trailer and without any of the electronics. Um, but in my opinion, if you're going to spend the money on a boat, that hard top is a great addition to this craft. Um, it's dry on the inside. We copped, a, we copped spray all over the front of that thing. It keeps it dry. I think after you, you have a boat with a hard top, you'll find it hard to go back to something with a soft top and a bimini around the outside. Just my opinion, because it's your money that you'll be spending. Um, but until next time, this is Steve Morgan checking out for Fishing Monthly Magazines at Raby Bay.